So with that, we'll kind of dive right in here today. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to put them in the Q&A or in the chat. I'd be happy to answer those questions for you. Uh, and if you have any follow-up or feedback, you know, definitely let me know. I think this is kind of an evolving topic. I mean, software factories have been around for, for some time, but they're really kind of gaining traction. And I think the way that the DO, Department of Defense, the DOD, the Air Force uses them kind of unique. So organizations today must really develop technological solutions capable of responding quickly and efficiently to customer demands while offering the best experiences possible. This new digital paradigm really gave rise to the birth of software factories. Software currently plays an important role in the development and evolution of organizations. We look at the importance of software for organizations as it relates to optimizing tasks, increasing profit, reducing costs, minimizing times. In other words, making operations easier and therefore enhancing strategy and competitiveness. So what is a software factory in that context? A software factory is an organized collection of software assets, tools, and processes, and highly motivated and skilled human resources that expedite the production and delivery of software solutions. And I want to point out that I mentioned highly motivated and skilled uh, human resources because when you take this software factory approach, you end up creating a pipeline of talent that are going to come into your organization and probably go as they upskill, which is okay, but that needs to be accounted for in the competitive landscapes organizations find themselves in when it comes to talent acquisition, right? And so you can, as long as you plan for this, I think you can really create a nice uh, model where you're bringing in talent, upskilling them, giving them opportunity. Um, to move on and really be able to drive that value for your organization, your customer. The factory approach is modeled directly off traditional manufacturing techniques. I mean, there's not a lot different there where a collection of tools alongside a well-designed process eliminates waste throughout the product life cycle. So in the software world, this means eliminating redundant activities, uh, minimizing unnecessary manual tasks and maximizing the value derived from the developers. The number one requirement to accomplish these goals is really automation, right? And think about traditional manufacturing. Automation is what really drives a lot of that. And in the traditional factory, the assembly line connects the processes, tools, and people required to produce those high-quality products. Similarly, a good software factory requires that automation connect the same processes, tools, and people into high-functioning pipelines to deliver software that's always deployment-worthy. And we'll talk about kind of deployment quite a bit today. And I have some resources and takeaways, I think, that you can leverage depending on you know, how much continuous delivery, continuous deployment you do today. So a common term for this approach, right, is DevSecOps. Um, that's what we're here to talk about today um, in the context of the software factory environment. So the software factory development approach leads to significant benefits. Uh, a few of them that we're going to kind of go through as we talk today is a shorter time to market. So that's going to allow a reduction budget for development. Um, custom enterprise software development starts to transform from these fixed cost projects to variable cost projects, which can have some benefits to it. Let us kind of iterate early, decide if this thing is worth pursuing or not scenarios. The standardization of the software development across all the development teams starts to reduce development errors and re does result in a higher quality and consistency. And we've got some examples of that we'll touch on today. Standardization in a fixed technology set further allows uh, the reduction of training time of the resources um, for development and maintenance because we've made this very repeatable. And then it allows a direct focus on our clients' objectives um, more so than over the life cycle of development software products because we can really start to focus and, and narrow in on what their needs are. And then agile and quick adaption, adaptation of the software factory approach based on the client the client the client requirements and features through that development life cycle. So again, kind of really iterating closely with those with those organizations so that we make sure that we're getting that good feedback. And a lot of times these can be like software factories can be like an outsourced service, right? Like almost like a shared services group. They may even have, depending on the organization, and I'll give some examples here in a minute, they kind of can offer different types of services. Some may be more platform, some may actually be offering you developers that you can assign projects to, to build out your applications. 